Hello and welcome to Lore of the Cards, the series that looks to find the lore hidden in your Hearthstone deck. As mentioned in our last two Angoro episodes, we're doing a card review on the lore behind each card revealed. There may be more lore than I cover here, or for some cards, there may be no lore at all. These are just quick summaries. Since I'm a little behind, the cards I'm going to talk about here won't be in the order that they were revealed. These are just all the cards I could find at the time of writing. So, let's start things off with Firefly. While these elementals aren't characters in WoW, it's easy to believe that they could be. The Warcraft Chronicle states that elemental spirits can appear in an almost infinite variety of shapes and sizes, and it's more than plausible that Firefly could be one of those shapes. In WoW alone, fire elementals appear as dogs, birds, spiders, turtles, giants, and more human shapes, to name a few. There are fireflies in World of Warcraft, but they are beasts, not elementals. Creatures that can be found on both Azeroth and the Orcish homeworld of Draenor. They are hunted for their beautiful wings. It's unknown what powers the light in the Firefly's abdomen, though a leading theory is that the light is magical in nature. Primalfin Murlocs have been added as a new Murloc variety in Journey to Ungoro. In WoW, there were no Murlocs in Ungoro. That is, until Giant Finn was very recently added in the Angoro Madness mini-event. What little we know of Primal Murlocs we saw in Professor George H. Doyle's expedition footage. The Murlocs seem to welcome the hapless explorer, though this could just be a front as Murlocs aren't generally known for their hospitality. We can also gather from the footage that the Murlocs make use of hallucinogenics. Is this a tactic to lull potential meals into a false sense of security? part of a ritual, or just for laughs. This possibly ritualistic behaviour makes me think of the bleeding hollow clan of orcs on the alternate Draenor, but that's some alternate timeline stuff that I'm not getting into here. One of the rituals that the chieftain of the clan would participate in was to sacrifice an eye to gain a vision of their death. We have already seen several Tolvir announced for the expansion. The Stone Shaper, Warden, and the legendary Sunkeeper Tarim. It is highly likely these Tolvir are of the Nefeset tribe as their bodies are made of stone. The race was created not long after the imprisonment of the Old Gods by the Titanforged, as part of a new generation of Titanforged. The Tolvir and Anubisath were entrusted with guarding the Forge of Origination. This construct helped regulate the rhythm of Azeroth's traumatised world soul that will one day become a titan in the wake of the titan-forged Old God War. It had another purpose too, to destroy all life on Azeroth if the planet became corrupted. Eventually, many Tolvir would succumb to the Curse of Flesh, an Old God creation to weaken their physical forms. In the Cataclysm expansion, the Nefeset regained their stone form by allying with the Mad Dragon aspect, Deathwing, and a civil war broke out between the Tolvir tribes. Tarim is a Hearthstone creation, but another Sunkeeper, Croesus, was recently added to WoW as part of Angoro Madness. This suggests the Sunkeeper title is given to important members of the race, and if Tarim and Croesus are anything to go by, their power isn't to be sniffed at either. The legendary Osruk has nothing to do with Angoro. In fact, he was found in WoW in a totally different plane of existence, the elemental plane of Deepholm. Osruk was a dungeon boss in the Cataclysm dungeon, the Stonecore. Osruk had allied himself with the Twilight's Hammer, a cult dedicated to bringing about Azeroth's Hour of Twilight. The Stone Mother Therizane, ruler of the realm, couldn't believe one of her children would ally with the Hammer. Convinced some dark magic had been placed upon Osruk, she sent her other children to free the giant elemental from the Hammer's nefarious hold, but no dark magic was ever cast upon Osruk. Therizone requested aid from adventurers to defeat her corrupted child, to return Osruk's body to the earth. As a foe, Osruk was difficult to kill, much like his card design. By using his Elementium shield ability, he had a high chance to reflect back attackers' spells, and with his Elementium spike shield, would cause melee attackers to bleed profusely. Obviously, Osruk was added to Journey to Angoro due to him being a notable elemental. The Mage's Flame Geyser spell is clearly inspired by the volcano at Angoro's centre, 
a fire elemental is depicted on the card and Fireplume Ridge is swarming with them. While there isn't really any notable lore behind the Hydrologist, it is the first ever depiction of a female Murloc in official Blizzard artwork. Looking at her explorer's outfit, she may be a colleague of the world famous Sir Finley Murgleton. She is possibly a member of Elise's junior explorers, looking at the badges on her hat. To my current knowledge, crystal elementals like the Crystalline Oracle are a new elemental type added for Journey to Angoro. But there is a precedent for beings being made of crystal, or at least crystal-like material in WoW. The crystal spiders have very hardy bodies, their legs never break, even when slain. These legs are valued for their conductive properties. The Crystalline Oracle may be related to the power crystals that can be found all over Angoro. When presented to the three crystal pylons found in Angoro, these crystals can combine to create new crystals with various properties, and can be used as weapons for healing or for protection, for example. Shadow Vision would appear to give us a further look into the primal murlocs. The mysterious stone is surrounded by murloc cave paintings, which seem to dance. Since this odd stone is so close to this murloc art, could it be possible that the primal murlocs are able to use shadow magic? While the Mimic Pod itself has not been used in WoW, there are several occasions when players find themselves fighting copies of themselves. The Shah of Doubt in the Temple of the Jade Serpent Dungeon would make players fight an image of themselves, and so too would Herald Valage. There are more enemies who pit heroes against themselves, but these are perhaps two of the most notable. I'm unsure as to what area the road quest The Caverns Below is referencing. It's possible it may be referring to the cave located in the old Marshall's Refuge, before Marshall and his men needed to move after the Cataclysm. I say this because of the Crystal Core reward card. This cave gleams with the power crystals located around Angoro, and is the only place to have such a high concentration of these fragile glimmering shards. But this cave isn't exactly below, being located up a hill. There is another cave system, located at Fungal Rock, where the Angoro gorillas live, but again, I don't think it's here. The adventurer depicted in the card seems to be wandering a place where not many tread. Perhaps there is more to Angoro than what is on the surface. There may even be a way to journey beneath the earth and observe fossils of some of the titanic creatures that used to stride through the crater. Due to its rock-like form, I would presume the stone sentinel is a lava elemental. While lava elementals have both elements of earth and fire within their forms, they more often than not align themselves with the fire elementals. Perhaps the best known lava elemental would be Gar, one of Ragnaros' most trusted lieutenants. Unite the Murloc shows that the Hydrologist is just as happy helping shamans out as paladins. This suggests that there may be several primal Murloc tribes located in Angoro, and when united, Megafin will fight at their side. Megafin is huge for a Murloc. The only other Murloc to come close to it in size is Mutanus the Devourer. But this boss, located at the end of the Wailing Caverns, is no Murloc, but is instead a manifestation of the Emerald Nightmare. Seems I've said this a lot this episode, but Kalimos is yet again a Hearthstone character creation. There is a precedent for primal elementals in Warcraft lore, though these elementals are rare. Primal elementals are formed of all four elemental types. Animus was a primal created by the Twilight's Hammer. The hammer fed Animus with power in order to make the primal explode and obliterate the Thousand Needles and surrounding areas. The Elementium Monstrosity was another creation of the hammer, when the Ascendant Council combined their forms to become a primal. The Council were once mortals that transformed into elementals who served the Twilight's hammer. Finally, the Warlock legendary Clutch Mother Zavas has recently undergone a transformation in World of Warcraft. She was once a rare spawning Silithid Reaver that could be found on the Slithering Scar in Angoro. Recently, she has matured into a Silithid Wasp, and is a boss encounter during the Angoro Madness event. The Silithid Hive in southern Angoro is currently nurturing a Silithid Colossus that, when fully grown, will be unleashed upon the crater. 
So, there's yet another quick lore roundup on each of the cards announced so far. No doubt this video is already out of date upon release. I better get on with scripting the next episode. If you enjoyed the art, I did my best to credit the artists in the description below. If you want to keep up to date with Six Gamers, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Until next time, happy hearthstoning.